Hey guys, Dr. Will O'Connor here. I am 18 weeks out from my longest ever race, 24 hours around an athletics track. I wanna run a minimum of 200 Ks and I haven't run more than 100 Ks or 10 hours before. So this is gonna take a lot of preparation. I'm gonna have to utilize the most of the sports science and knowledge I have to get the most out of myself physically. So one of the ways I'm doing that is I've gone out and I've got a lactate pro lactate meter. And that is gonna allow me to make sure I am training in the most effective way to induce the best adaptations and result in the greatest performance. So what I did was I went out and just did a lactate test. I just got this and that's the first thing to do go out, find my lactate curve and get the data that I need. So as a starting point, I want to go out and find my lactate curve, which just shows you where your point of inflection or threshold is. And you can see that on my graph here where the graph is pretty flat until it shoots up. And that's when I reach my threshold and lactate starts to accumulate. So what I did was I went down to the athletics track did sets of 1200 meters. So I did 1200 meters, tested 1200 meters. There was around a minute to a minute and a half break in between each while I was testing my blood lactate. So what you do is you just get a finger prick of blood squeeze, well, shouldn't really squeeze, but wipe, test, and then you have the lactate meter tells you how much lactate's in your blood. One of the most accurate ways to figure out what you're doing biochemically, physiologically, uh, when you're exerting, you know, trying to do a certain output. So whether that's swim speed, power output, running speed, whatever it is, if you're doing it, you can determine how hard you're going, you know, more accurately with the help of some kind of blood lactate meter. So what I did was 1200 meters, bunch of different times at increasing speed. So I started at five minute Ks, four and a half, four minute, three and a half, then tried to do three minute, but I was a bit stuffed and uh, did three, three fifteens. And you can see my lactate went from 1.2, 1.2, one millimolar. So I was able to, you know, really, I was well below threshold. I was able to metabolize lactate as it was being produced and it wasn't even being produced at that greater rate anyway that it was accumulating until three and a half minute k's 4.2 so four is the start point for your threshold and where above four you can maintain your pace really determines like your physiology or like your your genetics as well as your training so once i drop below three and a half minute k's down to like a 315 lactate went sky high it just accumulated exponentially and there's no way i had any ability to sustain that effort and that shows in the data so what i do know is my threshold is around three and a half minute k's what i can do now is i can retest this exact protocol later on after i've done a you know training a specific training block to try and improve my lactate threshold or i can go out and run at three and a half minute k's for say 30 minutes to see how what my lactate looks like after 30 minutes what my you know running at threshold if i'm accumulating or able to buffer and maintain that sort of four to five millimolar and that'll give me a good indication of you know my capacity to operate at threshold and i know from you know about this time last year i ran a half marathon averaging just under like 328s, 329s, around a 3, 3, uh, 113. So I know that's possible for me to be able to buffer that, but it needs to be training specific. And I also, you know, I've got a 24 hour event, so I'm gonna be working a lot at the very lower end of that. But that doesn't mean it's not gonna make you better across all distances, because you see this flat part of the curve here, that can help push your threshold to the right. And the right being, your speed so if you're able to operate at four minute k's way more efficiently then once you get to three and a half minutes or even three fifteens lactate may not be accumulating at the same rate because it didn't start accumulating until say 345s where you know maybe it was accumulating at 355s and one and got four by the time you're at 330s and then exponential increase no chance of buffering when you're at you know your super sort of 5k race pace but anyway those are some of the things that i'm going to be working on and it's really effective when you know you've got 
training and you you got intervals and you want to make sure you're doing you know the best the best bang for buck in your intervals and i've got these 2k threshold intervals coming up so what i can do is just test my blood lactate after each of those 2k sets during the rest period and more importantly after the last one to make sure i'm not thrashing myself I want to be able to produce export and buffer lactate and associated hydrogen ions that come with lactate and cause the majority of you know the skeletal muscle contractile issues or fatigue issues that we have when we are operating above threshold so that's some of the stuff that i am doing at the moment to ensure that i'm training effectively and i can get the most out of myself and i can also figure out really like what kind of pacing strategy i'm going to need because i can see you know, i can run for five minute k's for five six hours in the coming weeks and see if any lactate's accumulating see what kind of fatigue decay curve i'm getting and just need to be right on the point with everything if i'm going to get this 200k plus goal in november all right guys until next time stay in touch Keep listening to the podcast, Performance Advantage podcast. Check out the masterclass course that the podcast is doing. You know, that helps you learn all of the stuff in more depth. Six part course. And we've got the Endurance Training Hub where I do weekly webinars on that to help you train more effectively. Till next time, guys. Happy training. Happy training.